kid. Seriously. <laughs> Welcome to episode two of Star Wars in Review. This is Maya Madrid and my buddy Luke Neitzel, where we're going to talk about The Last Jedi. We're going to talk about everybody's favorite space hippie, Qui-Gon Jinn, and then review for you the first episode of the Clone Wars animated series, uh, the episode entitled Ambush. But before we get started, let's check in with Neitzel. Neitzel, how you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. We're on to episode two. I can't believe how the time has flown. We've it goes we've, very quickly. We've come so far. It's amazing. And my uh, the Humble Camero Studios, a.k.a. My basement with my Halloween decorations. It's very humble. Humble is, uh, but it's nice. Yeah, it's not too bad. My my son fell asleep above us because it's late at night, so he's not trying to yell down to us anymore through the vents. So that makes it makes it a little more cozy and comfortable, I suppose. And the dog is asleep, I imagine. Both the dogs are asleep, it sounds like, which is good because we have a puppy who is two months old and she likes to bark, and that's fabulous very good very good well let's jump right in then to our first topic and it's sort of the explanations that we're getting from disney and the star wars franchise about the last jedi we learned a little bit from the knights of about the knights of ren from director ryan johnson he said that the reason that he didn't include them is he didn't feel that there was enough space got a explanation as to leia's mary poppins moment where he explained that there wasn't a lot of force power needed to push her through the vacuum of space. We learned that the reason that Johnson chose to use Luke's blue lightsaber over his green lightsaber, basically an attempt to troll Kylo Ren, which I love. And then finally the force Skyping between Rey and Kylo Ren was explained that he needed them to talk, and that was the only way that they weren't going to fight immediately when they talk. And we kind of see that when she first meets him, she starts shooting. There's a precedent for that too, because they do that in Star Wars Rebels. They have some of that kind of long distance. Yoda does it. I think Darth Maul and the Emperor do it as well. Well, and, and with Vader Ezra. and Luke in Empire Strikes Back right when he that's, leaves. So. That's right. So there, there is a precedence for it. Well, what I want to ask you uh, tonight is, is Ryan Johnson's need to explain these certain aspects of the story perhaps haven't sat well with fans going to hurt the way that we view the movie the movie franchise going forward possibly but i don't think this is that new a thing especially in the age we are where you have guys sitting in basements making podcasts and everyone can get on the internet doing this and there's tons of questions and things like that and we have access to people you can tweet at ryan johnson he's on there he might look at it you never know he might respond so i think he's just answering questions fans have and I think as someone who likes film and likes learning how films are made, I do appreciate that he gives what appear to be honest answers about why he made certain decisions and why he didn't make certain decisions. Some of his answers I agree with and some I don't. I don't think you necessarily needed the Knights of Ren in there because it wouldn't have served the story any way that we needed that we weren't already served. Maybe a mention would have been nice because we know they're floating out there somewhere. The Leia thing I don't buy. She should have died immediately in space. I don't like that moment at all. And there isn't an explanation you're going to give me that that makes me like it. I think it's fun that he's willing to give those answers. To me, I, I equate it as a coach who explains why he picked those plays. You just get better insight into what the decision making is in the filmmaking, and and I like that. See, for me, going back with The Force Awakens, there was one of these moments, and that's when Chewie did not hug Leia. They kind of walk by each other, and Leia go, at the end after Leia Han goes, dies, right, yeah, and Leia goes to hug Rey, and J.J. Abrams' response was, "Ah, screwed up," and that was the end, and that was the only real thing that I saw that 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 the studio or the director really got out in front of it. To me, it's, an, again, indicative of the dissatisfaction with this movie, but people are really sort of in turmoil over it. Even people who like the movie, there's a lot of people that, there's a lot of things that they didn't like about the movie, and so I think this that's part of it. It just keeps gnawing at me and gnawing at me. I don't think they're necessarily apples to apples, though, because J.J. Abrams' movie wasn't supposed to give you answers. So you can't ask him those questions because you're expecting those answers to be in the next movie. And you have to wait for that. Where I think Ryan Johnson's movie was expected to answer a lot of Abram's questions. And it didn't answer a lot of them. Or it answered them unsatisfactory to a lot of people's tastes. It's not mine, but a lot of people's. So I think they're a little different situations. It is interesting, though, because when I saw that moment in Force Awakens, my first thought in my head was, 
Leia recognizes her. That's why she hugged her. That's what went through my head in the theater. And then J.J. Abrams was like, no, I just screwed up. So I was like, oh, well, I guess I thought about that too much. But I still appreciate the honesty when they give that answers. And I think it's also cool that Abrams is willing to say that that was a bad choice. I think good on good on both directors for being willing to engage with fans like that. Second topic for us relates to Qui-Gon Jinn in a report by Yahoo, Liam Neeson mentions that he'd be open to appearing in the mysterious and maybe not even real thing Obi-Wan movie. My question for you, Luke, do we need this in a a Kenobi flick? Is it fun and does it add to anything or is this just another callback of making the universe smaller and pulling in things that we already know about? What are your thoughts on Qui-Gon Jinn maybe as a force ghost uh, with his old buddy Ewan McGregor? I am all about it. I enjoy Liam Neeson a lot. And and even though he wouldn't get the chance to kill lots of Eastern European people in this film, I still think it would be fun to see him. I think it would also make sense, assuming that this is a small, you know, set on Tatooine type story. It would explain a lot, I think, about the Obi-Wan character that he's communing with Qui-Gon and and still practicing the Force. And this explains how he communicates with Yoda, how he's able to come back as a Force ghost as well when he dies. I think it makes a lot of sense and it could really serve the purpose or the serve the story of the movie and serve the character well. And I think Liam Neeson's fun and I want to see him in more Star Wars stuff. So bring it on. I, I, I don't as a whole, like we talked in our last episode about uh, the Clone Wars. And I, one of the things that I, I meant to mention and didn't get around to is I didn't like the fact that they used Jabba again. Why not use a different person that might be important and bring in a new element to give us a broader view of the galaxy? That's generally my attitude towards these type of things. However, this is important to the story. At the end of the prequels, Yoda tells Obi-Wan that it's Qui-Gon who has broken through as as a force ghost to communicate and we know that there's going to be the that communication between Qui-Gon and Ewan McGregor's character Obi-Wan Kenobi when he's on Tatooine and so I think it would be perfect now is the movie still going to be fine without it sure do I want it to be something that I'm not expecting sure but Qui-Gon Jinn in this movie I think would be awesome and so I really hope that Liam Neeson agrees and that they can work it out I really hope there's a movie at all because this is actually one of the the spinoffs that i actually want to see yeah especially if it's a small self-contained story Mm -hmm. that's what i think would be great here which is kind of funny because we're going to talk about something similar in ambush later on but i also fun fact you may know this that liam neeson was supposed to be in revenge of the sith at the end they were set up to film and he either got injured or sick and couldn't make it so they had to change it from him appearing to yoda saying that line about qui-gon can talk to us now from the past Sounds like they were going to do it anyway as part of the story, and I'd love to see an updated version of it. Excellent, excellent. 